The NFL's only undefeated team, now 4-0, Rube. Still the, the only undefeated team, yeah. Uh, finding different ways to win, which is striking thing to me was they won last week in Washington just throwing the ball. They couldn't run. Mm -hmm. Today, they won running the ball for the most yeah. part. And and defensively, three straight really, really big weeks. Uh, it was an impressive one. It was. This is the Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. A lot to get to. We're going to talk about some injuries at the end because the Eagles did not have a clean game from that perspective. We'll talk about Doug Peterson. I had a chance to catch up with him before the game a little bit. Always good to see Dougie. Uh, defense was big. Offense did its part. But let's just look at this thing from kind of a big picture standpoint, Rube. I agree with you. Like they, they've, They're finding different ways to win. And the fact that they got punched in the mouth and came back in this one, you obviously don't want to be in that situation, but – it tells you a lot about this team. Yeah, I think Nick told us the story about, I think it was before his first game as a head coach, which I guess was Atlanta last year, that Larry Karras called him, of course, mm -hmm. probably calls him before every game, uh, and said, if they score first, who cares? If you're down, you know, if you're down early, who cares? Keep playing. And it's something he's preached to his team. Um, a lot of things were going wrong in that first quarter, mm -hmm. you know, from that the pick six, uh, Slay's hurt. Um, my lot is hurt. My lot is hurt on the return. Uh, the conditions are bad. I mean, there was just a lot yeah. going on. Yeah, the pick six obviously was. A, it felt like a huge, like that. Yeah, it felt like one of those games. I kind of joked about it. Like if you're playing a video game, you just push the reset button and and forget it ever happened. Yeah, you can't do that here. Um, this team and they've. This is something they've really shown for two years. They they. Um, they're resilient that way. Adversity is something that every team faces and how you do against it, uh, how you respond to it really defines who you are. And um, Nick really gets that message across, you know, until there's all zeros on the clock, just keep playing, just mm -hmm. keep fighting, just keep, you know, focusing on the next play. And it's trite and it's a cliche to us, but it, it, it's really valuable to these guys. And I think that's what they yeah. did today down 14, nothing. There's a lot of time left. Uh, and they really just took control of the game, scored the next 20, I believe, the next 29 points. Um, no, there was the end, the last touchdown. Well, they scored the next 29 points. Yeah, not the last. I didn't say the last. I said the next. Okay. Yeah, the next 29 points. And and took command of the game. And they didn't try to do it all in one, one play. Nobody tried to do too much. Nobody tried to be Superman. Um they just did their jobs, and um, yeah, it was you know it was really the first time this year that they faced that kind of. I guess at the end of the Detroit game, they faced some adversity. Um, different though, different, but different. kind of hang, had to hang on and kind of pray for that clock to go down to zero as Detroit was coming back. But uh, you know they had to they had to convert at the end of that game. But this mm -hmm. was this was big. It's actually the last time they. This is really funny. The last time they came back from. A 14 point deficit at the end of the first quarter was also against the Jaguars in 2014. That game, they were down 17 nothing at halftime and they won 30, 38 to 17. They scored the last 38 or the next 38 points. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of resilience and a lot of uh, mental toughness, a lot of focus. Yeah. And I, I thought it was really telling after the game, Jalen Hurst was kind of asked about it. And he said, what, made the difference for him was that they didn't have to say it. You know, sometimes you think about like Jalen Hurts is probably on the sideline telling his guys, we got this, we got this. No, they just knew it. And, and that's important because they're going to be in a situation again like this at some point, you know, whether it's in the regular season or the postseason. And it's, it's such a weird deal because no one wants, you know, the Eagles don't want to be down 14, nothing, but you learned a lot about them. And it, it's not a bad thing to be in those situations. You try to avoid them, but, I think it ends up actually being a, a net positive coming out of this game that they ended up in a situation where they had to fight from behind. Yeah, no, I think that's true probably for the coaches and, and the players. And um, if you're never in that position, you're not going to learn those lessons. Uh, they're, they're impressive from that standpoint, just in, in – uh, I mean, how many times have we heard Nick talk about, you know, just focusing on the next play, the next snap, the next rep, whatever it is? They really do that. And I don't think that's an easy thing to do. No, just, I mean, in like in anyone's life, like you're always, it's hard to focus on what's right in front of you. But in football, it's obviously really important because that was a game that could have spiraled. You know, you, you, you get down early, 
you're at home, you're like, we got to get the crowd back. We got to just do whatever we can to improve it. And you try to have a 14 point play and it's, they don't exist. And I think Lawrence had, um, Agnew open too. It could have been 21. Mm -hmm. Pretty, pretty easily. Yeah. He missed him. He missed him. Uh, Take those. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, a lot of good things. A lot of good things came out of it. Uh, maybe not statistically, but maybe not artistically, but, um, really a lot of positives. Yeah. You want to talk about the offense a little bit? Uh, first off, we're going to get the Miles Sanders, but I want to highlight Hertz a little bit because that the pick was awful. It was an awful, awful play, but I give him so much credit because he didn't dwell on it, and um, they got back, and, and he ended up playing a pretty good game for the conditions. I thought so, too, and I think I said on pregame that whoever whoever deals with the conditions better, they're, they're going to win mm-hmm. the game, and obviously Hertz did a much, much better job of dealing with the conditions than Trevor Lawrence and, and the Jaguars, and I thought that was a difference. And, I mean, that's a talented team over there. It really is. You can tell they're well-coached. They have talent. They're fast and physical. They got young, you know, first and second round picks all over that roster. Uh, but the Eagles didn't turn the ball over after that one. And to come out of that game in those conditions, and if you weren't there, if you were there, you know how bad it was. It was gross. Uh, it was it was nasty because it wasn't just raining, but it was windy. It was gusty. Like swirling wind. Swirling wind. That that extra point Jake Elliott missed, not his fault. I mean, that it's ball. right down the middle. That ball just, made a right turn. It did. Yeah. It did. Um, it was bad out there. I thought the field, it looked like the field was in decent shape. Um, I was I was out there watching when they took the tarp off. It drains really well. Um, but, yeah, it, it was. It got messy by the end. Though. I'm sure it did, Just, yeah. you know, it's, it's a soaked field and guys are running on it. I, I, yeah. You know, and Sirianni said that by you know the second half, it was it was mucky out there. Yeah, and I think you saw the Eagles stop stop throwing the ball mm-hmm. pretty much at that point. Um, so yeah, so to for for Jalen to and yeah the 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 pick was um, was maybe probably the worst pass he's thrown this year. Yeah, it was a terrible decision. You you can't make that throw on a good day. You 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 know you're not yeah. making it. In these conditions, yeah, certainly, yeah. You don't, you don't even make that to AJ Brown, much less Zach Pat. No, nothing is Zach Pascal, but yeah. uh, and it was they covered it well, and they got the the deflection and 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 the pick six. And other than that, ran the ball fifty times for two hundred plus yards. Um, I thought Jalen just made good decisions for for everything that was going on around him, and also he's out there, you know, with. With uh, Jack Driscoll at left tackle, and then in the end of the game with um, Sua at right guard. Right guard. I'll tell you what, Driscoll had some sketchy moments, Early. but he he stood in there and battled. He's never played left tackle in the NFL. Yeah, and that's tough. He probably didn't start practicing there until Dillard got hurt. Mm-hmm. So that's only a few weeks ago. And you're going against good yeah. players. I mean, you're, it's it's Jack Driscoll at a new position going against the number one overall pick. Yeah. And Walker did some good things, and but I thought by the second half, I thought Driscoll really settled in nicely. He did, um, and they, I mean, especially running the ball. I mean, he was, you know, he was he had a lot to do with some of those runs. So I was I was really impressed. And Sue, I think Sue is a solid guy. Um, he didn't, you know, he wasn't out there all that long. I think Sam all got hurt early in the fourth, I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to to be out there down forty percent your O line and win a game and put up another 400 yards is, uh, is yeah, impressive. 200 rushing yards, right? 50 carries. It's their most since, well, it ties their most since 87. Wow. It's a lot of carries. Yeah. And it's, it's a game where you had to do it. 210 yards rushing. Yeah. How about Jalen? I guess the number one rush defense, by the way. Sure. Yeah. And, and even if you looked at the Jags and said, well, yeah, but they got ahead the last two games and sure, but they were still giving up just 3.1 yards per right. attempt. So, I mean, they were good. Yeah. That Jalen Hurts touchdown run, how tough is he? And it's the fourth down. It's like you, you hold your breath because we, you know, we've seen that play before with a different quarterback, and it didn't end well. Yeah, but he needed it. Yeah, they needed it, and he's so strong that I mean, how good are they at QB sneaks? Yeah, when you're picking up three yards a a QB sneak, I mean that's insane. Jalen's got three fourth down touchdowns since the opening day last yeah. year, which is more than anyone else in the league. You know who's second? Boston Scott. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's uh, he's so good on fourth down, and I think it's it's obviously he's very tough. He's very strong. Um, the first hit never 
never gets them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to get numbers to him or you have no shot. And he always makes the first guy miss. He always makes the first guy miss. But he's also got great vision. I think he's got great vision down there that really enables him to, even if there's not much of a hole, he'll he'll find whatever there is and then try to fight his way through from there. Yeah. Um, he's He's got such a knack for those plays. And it gives Nick the confidence to go for it I mean, on, on so many fourth downs. And it's kind of funny to see Nick out fourth downing the fourth down master on the other sideline. Yeah, and the Eagles were awful on third downs. They were 4 of 15. 26%. In some of those situations, they were kind of like two down, two down. Yeah. Like they knew they were going for it on fourth. So, yeah. What did you think of the fourth down at, at the end of the game? I, I don't know how much of that was Elliot. Yeah, not being healthy. Um, if he was healthy enough to kick it, I would have kicked it. Yeah, but hey, you know, yeah, um, it was also an interesting decision. It ended up not mattering because he he made the field goal. Take points off the board. They took points off the board, and like, <laughs> and he got hurt on it. Right. So when it happened, I was thinking like, normally I'd agree with that. Be aggressive, but it gives try you a, a, a two possession lead. Also, yeah, that's the thing. I. I probably would have kept the points. It ended up not mattering, and it worked out because they they killed some more clock too. Right, but it that was a that was a risky move because if what if Elliot couldn't have, couldn't kick? Now well, you don't, don't have a kicker. I'm sure part of the equation of 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 going for it, they're taking the points off the board. Is Jake? Can you kick a twenty? You know, whatever. Yeah, we have five yards. Can you kick a field goal? I um, talked to him after the game, Elliot. Uh, we'll get him injuries later, but he yeah. said he feels okay. They'll see how it goes this week. Yeah. But it was kind of cool. I was talking to Jake in the locker room. Jalen Hurts walks by, pats him on the back, and just goes, big F in play. They all know. I mean, that was that was huge. Yeah. yeah for a hurt kicker to go up there and hit a 28-yarder to the same side of the field where right. one took a right turn on him earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I think Nick sometimes, I think he's he was just so in that mode of being aggressive yeah. there. I think, and I, th I wonder how much of that had to do with Doug being on the other sideline. You know, I don't know. Nick's pretty aggressive. He is in general. He is, and he's got the team to do it. See, my problem with Doug in the 2020 season was that he was still the same aggressive guy, but his players weren't good enough to do it. Like, if you're going right. to be aggressive, like the numbers only tell you the percentages, but you have to look at your players that are out there and say, all right, do we have enough good players to make this? Like, is it still as likely to succeed given right. the players you have out there and the Eagles have really good players. So yeah. they should skew very aggressive and they do. Yeah. Um, I mean, the thing about taking the points off the board there is, I mean, <clears throat> it, it was still a first and 10. It wasn't a first and goal. Mm -hmm. We're on the 13, maybe. Yeah. Um, that's, those that's are tough, tough. yards yeah, down yeah, there. It is. Yeah. I, I probably would have kept the three points being a, a two possession game, yeah. but but hey, I, I admire his uh, gumption. Thank you. Yeah, I couldn't think of the appropriate word, but yeah. yeah. Anytime you can use the word gumption, you got yeah, that's a good one. You got to throw it out there. Miles Sanders, man, best game of his career. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with you. And it's it's a game where like everyone knows you're running. Yeah, those yards are hard to come by. You give the line a ton of credit. Obviously, I thought Jason Kelsey was incredible. There was a play. There was a 13 yard gain that Miles had early where Kelsey pancaked. He pancaked the uh, defensive tackle and then just darted out in the open field and pancaked the linebacker. And Miles just dashed 13 yards behind him. He, he is so good. <clears throat> My goodness. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Miles was, um, I mean, he had the one long run, which was great to see him in the open field. It's mm -hmm. been a while. It's, it's a I thought run. he had a chance to break it. Yeah. Yeah. Safety um, closed. Yeah. Good play by the safety. Yeah, it was. Um, but a lot of tough yards, a yeah. lot of tough inside yards. Yeah. Some like, Grinding, just yeah, carrying guys. Twenty-seven. It's carries. the kind of game he doesn't have early in his career. Yeah, you're right. And I mean, there were a couple games in his rookie year where he had 25, 26 <laughs> carries, and and you know, but since then, he's I mean, a he, different runner. He right? hasn't been a high volume guy. Yeah, I think he's thought of kind of as a, well, he's thought of as fragile because he's been hurt a lot. But mm -hmm. um, and he, you know, he was banged up this week. So to see him come out, a uh, career high, twenty-seven carries, career high. Was it 131? Was that the final total? 134. 134. His previous high was 131. 131, yeah. And and five yards a pop against that team. And two touchdowns. And it's two only touchdowns. his third career two touchdown yeah. rushing um, touchdown. And he made a couple of plays catching the ball, which mm -hmm. we just haven't seen a lot of. Mm -hmm. um, so he, made, he had the most exciting six-yard pass catch I've ever seen. He was one move away from mm -hmm. really getting yeah. like 20 yards on that. But 156 scrimmage yards, two touchdowns. 
Um, I think it's his third most scrimmage yards. It, it was a day they really needed him. Yeah, and, and he came through big. And he's. I mean, he didn't do a whole lot last week. The running game never got on track. And after the first quarter, I'm thinking it's two games in a row. They can't really get the running yeah. game going. Uh, but they found they found it in that second quarter. Yeah. By the way, off topic, but 20 points in the second quarter. They now have 89. 80, 85. 85 points. They missed the PAT. Most um, ever. Most ever in NFL history. Yeah. The next closest? 71. 71 by the 41 Bears. Bears. Yeah. I like that we both looked that up. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was a fun team to cover. I was, I was in Chicago <laughs> at that point. That. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you make of Sid that? Sid Luckman, I think, was on that. Team. What do you make of that? Just the second quarter thing? Yeah. I think it's a fluke at this point. Um, Could but it be like you're adjusting? I think that might be part There's of it. part of it, right? Yeah, I think adjustments are part of it. Um, and you're deferring. So that's, that's most of their points this year. It's Yeah. And you're, and you're deferring, too. So yeah. like the, the chances that you're going to get the ball in the second are better, I guess. I suppose, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, they have what? Is it, what is it? Eighty-five in the um, in the second quarter, and they only have twenty, thirty other points. Yeah. So they one fifteen out of one forty-five. So seventy-nine percent of their points are in the second. Finally, quarter. got some fourth quarter points in this. Game. That was good. Yeah. yeah, and they they needed them as mm-hmm. it turned out. Um, I thought they were a little better in the in the second half offensively when they needed to be. Mm-hmm. And I'm not. I'm still not concerned about. Second half, I'm even going back to the last game, no, I either. think they've done enough good things, and the points haven't followed, but they will. Uh, Gain, I thought Gainwell had, you know, Gainwell and Sermon. Trey get, Sermon, how about that? His first carry as an Eagle goes for fourteen yards. Yeah, that was that was a nice run. I thought he might get a few more. He had one more carry for, I think, for five yards, mm-hmm. uh, and Gainwell had a ten yard touchdown. So um, you, you're running it fifty times. You I'll tell you what, though, some of those passing plays is Gainwell. Yeah, yeah, that's well, that's been a problem throughout camp. I mean, yeah. We, he had the one that should have been a touchdown, and Jalen probably overthrew it a little bit. But yeah, you got to catch that catch ball. Um, yeah, that was that was bad. And the only uh, other bad drop was the Dallas Goddard. But yeah, and my bold prediction was two Dallas Goddard touchdowns. So I was he was kinda, close to one. I was hot. he still had a really good game. He finished with seventy two yards. Yeah, I loved, and it was kind of what my thinking into this game was: they could hit him on a few screens, and they did. Yeah, because it's like it's such a it's a, a gross game. You're running so much. You have him in line. And then you just kind of leak him out, and he's so good after the catch. Yeah, yeah, he's such a weapon because I mean he just won't go down. Yeah, um, he's on pace for. Um, Want me to talk while you look up stats? One thousand twenty yards. Miles on pace for fifteen hundred yards. Yeah, I guess it's too early for on paces. A little early. But we're we're almost a quarter of the way through the season. After the first quarter, Sunday yeah. we will be. I hate that, by the way. I hate it. Too. I used to. I I loved how we had such. Yeah. You know, it'll be the twenty three percent poll. <laughs> That's what we are. That's where we're at now. Uh, but I guess my point was that everybody contributed in the running game, even the guy that that in his first game is an eagle, um, and you know, and receiving wise, I mean, it was mainly. It was mainly um, AJ and Dallas. I, I mean, I thought I thought AJ Brown bounced back after. I mean, I thought it was a terrible play on the on the pick six. Just make an effort. Yeah. So he he actually tweeted about this. You want to hear what he said? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll read it word for word here. Lack of effort? No. Parentheses never. Bad decision? Yes. LOL. My thought process was to strip the ball and get it back because defensive guys don't know how to carry the ball. But I got blocked. I'll just tackle him next time. LOL. Forgive me with a gif of SpongeBob pleading. He didn't get blocked. I mean, he just, I mean, the dude just ran. It wasn't great. And if he makes that tackle, Jordan Mylotta doesn't get hurt. Exactly. Cisco just kind of ran right past him. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, be that as it may, he, he bounced back and made some tough catches. I think all in the first half, I believe. Yeah. Might have this it, it, this is a perfect game for him. It's like the conditions are crappy. Just throw the ball to AJ. Just. Don't overthink it, and that's what they did. Two catches in the second half. So yeah, five for ninety-five. He's, I mean, if you have ninety-five yards in that slop, I mean, he's he, he's a different dude. He is. He got his, and he had a touchdown. It got taken away by a. Yeah. That was a bad call. Come on. It's, I guess technically by the letter of the law. Well, what did he? I mean, he he engaged. He engaged in yeah. a block, which you're not allowed to do. But he didn't even. He, he wasn't bar- even I mean, he, he was just like he was engaged. He wasn't blocking. Yeah, he wasn't blocking. It's yeah. yeah, it was weak. It was weak. 
technically a penalty, but yeah. yeah, it was it was tough to see a touchdown come off the board because of it. Yeah, that was a that was a rough one. But um, I mean, he, at the rate he's going, you know, there's a short list of great Eagles receivers, and it's you know it's Tommy McDonald, Harold Jackson, Harold Carmichael, Deshaun, and and To briefly and quick. And and quick is probably the best to me the best of all. He only did it five years because the vet destroyed his knees. But I mean, he's on his way to that group. He'll be there before you know it. Yeah, he, he. I mean, as far as pure talent, he's there. Yeah. Um. And you know, J- the connection he has with Jalen is is incredible. So yeah, it was good to see Devontae come back in the game. Mm-hmm. Um, Tough dude. Yeah, he is for a for a skinny yeah. scrawny guy. People, I mean. It- I hope people realize that last year he played the entire season with an elbow injury. Right. No one talked about. He gets his knee banged up, goes in the medical tent, tests it on the sideline right back in the game. He's tough. He's a tough dude. Yeah. Yeah. We, and we saw him. Um, we saw Mulata actually. Uh, I don't know how close he was to coming back in the game. Yeah. He came back on the sideline. Him and Slate came back on the sideline, but they didn't come back in. We'll, we'll go through the yeah. injury list because it was a long one. We'll do that in a little bit. You deserve a car that thrills you, a car that puts goosebumps on your goosebumps. At Nissan, we've got everything from your turbocharged SUVs to 100% electric vehicles that'll make your heart beat faster. Experience the thrill for yourself and shop your local Nissan store at NissanUSA.com today. Turnover battle in any game is big. In conditions like that, that's why you win or lose the game. Yeah. And the Eagles were so good with that. They had, the, obviously, the pick six was awful. They protected the football outside of that. And then their defense, man, they, they got after it again. Yeah, yeah. Five turnovers. They, they weren't all. I mean, the one was just Trevor. He might have run for a first down. He just coughed up the ball. I know. And then the one on a fourth down, it didn't really matter who recovered. Uh, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I thought the defense and Reddick, you know, just two strip sacks. You know who the last Eagle with two strip sacks in the game was? BG? It was – BG did it. There's only five Eagles have ever done that. Because I think that's a, it's kind of a relatively new thing, going for the mm-hmm. ball. Um, Javon Kirst did it. Fletch did it twice. BG did it. And Orlando Scandrick oh, the Jets is the last to do it. Yeah. Luke Falk yeah. returned one of them for a touchdown. But um, I really hate that stat. It makes me feel Scandrick. Dirty. It was great. Just, He's, yeah. He just took the ball from him. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> but, um, no, Reddick's really good at that. I asked uh, Fletch about it. And he's like, you know, a lot of guys go for the big hit. Hassan goes for the ball yeah. and within reason, like he's trying to, to get the quarterback down, but there's something he said about going for the football and Reddick seems to have a real knack for it. And it was clear that Lawrence was having trouble with mm-hmm. ball security. Yeah. So it made sense in this game. It did. And his last two games, I think he's got three and a half sacks and three forced fumbles. Three forced fumbles. He had one in the last game and right. two in this game. Right. So, um, look, it's a little slow start the first game or two, but, uh, he's doing exactly. He's legit. Yeah, he's and you know what he's I'm really impressed by is you, you think of him, he's like this, you know, kind of small outside linebacker who's gonna beat you with speed. He's savvy as a pass rusher. He's setting things up. There have been times where he'll set him up with an outside move and get back inside the, the, the shortest route to the quarterback. That's impressive to me because he, like I've seen him play a little bit before he came here, obviously. And but that's what what's in your mind when you think about a 235 pound Sam linebacker in this defense or any kind of edge rusher. You think he's just like he's taking a big loop and he's just trying to beat him with speed. He has more than that, and yeah. we've seen that. Yeah, that's good to see. I didn't see him enough, uh, you know, at his first two stops to really have a sense of what kind of, but you just assume with his size, that's the kind of rusher he is. But he, he's. He's on a roll right yeah. now. And the speed sets it up. Like, sure. you know, he you beat a guy outside enough, he's going to start cheating that way. And then you have a little stutter step and beat him on the straightest route. He's been really impressive. Yeah. Um, they're getting they're getting pass rush from, from a lot of guys. Uh, I think the one sack was a team sack when he dropped the ball. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, TJ Edwards had a sack, but um, – that was a weird sack. It was a great play by TJ, but Trevor Lawrence has got to throw the ball away. Yeah, I don't know what he was. I don't know what he was doing there, but um, I just thought the D line was really good. They were good. Um, and you know, James Robinson's a good back, and they just took him out of the game. They did. He's a good player. Took him out of the and game. And there were some chunks early. Yeah. We thought, ah, oh, this might not be great. Yeah. Um, Jordan Davis showed up with a big stuff. The first tackle for loss yeah. of his career. Yeah. Won't be the last. No, I don't think it will be. <laughs> yeah. He's so big. 
it's fun and it was on atn too so it's like it's fun to see this like 340 pound dude just like swallow a, a little running back yeah so if you're getting pass pressure from four guys really you know sweat fletch bg and reddick yeah. and you're getting it from hargrave too yeah 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 so it's uh you know i i feel like i feel bad that we've waited so long to talk about it james bradbury yeah what a pick yeah it was and it was they needed it it was i'll tell you what you know what i love two things i loved about that play slay was out and bradbury so bradbury now becomes cb1 and he played like it you know he really stepped up his game i thought he was good i thought he had a good game overall mm -hmm. um but that was such a product of of preparation and understanding. I mean, he saw Trevor Lawrence lock into Kirk and he left his man and he yeah. knew he had safety help. He left his man and just an acrobatic play. play. Sometimes he's got to make a play. Yeah. Um, and they're and in the red zone there. Another red zone turnover. It was down at the seven and uh, they weren't at the seven, but he picked it at the seven. Yeah, and, at the 16 yard line for that play. Yeah. And Lawrence just kind of floated it a little bit. And mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of zipping again. Now, but he, Lawrence just not really having a feel for the football in the rain. Uh, wet ball and sometimes I just start laughing like how the heck did they end up with James Bradbury? It, it's it's crazy. Um he's had he's playing really well and solid and man. You kind of maybe maybe we don't give him enough credit because Slay is just so he's so good and also just his personality is opposite of Bradbury. Bradbury's yeah. just a very quiet guy. I think I wrote a story about that dichotomy <laughs> yeah. training camp. Um but uh that was a that was a hell of a pick. Just kind of flying and to hold on to the ball. Uh, last year, that's a play that would have been a knockdown, and then they would have scored. Yeah. You know, he, there's no way the Eagles get a pick on that. How about a little shout out for Josiah Scott? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a little rough in yeah. the beginning. It looked like they were going to target him a bunch. Yeah, he really settled down. Had a few pass breakups. Yeah, he played did. Christian Kirk really well. He had that one on Kirk that was yeah. terrific. Yeah, Kirk ended up having. Uh, some garbage, not garbage. I guess they were still in the game, but some some plays at the end of the game. He ended up with two for sixty. And they were both in the last ten minutes of the game. Yeah, but I mean, before then, he had seven targets and no catches. They yeah. did a great job against Christian Kirk, yeah. and that's without your starting nickel. Yeah, I mean, that's a big deal. Yeah, I, I agree, and I th I think the same. It, it was real a parallel between Driscoll and Josiah Scott. Mm -hmm. I thought they both kind of were shaky early, and you're like, uh oh, yeah. And they both kind of settled in. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and Zach. Big McPherson, revenge game for Josiah. Bigger. Big revenge game. Yeah. Former, former Jaguar <laughs> played his rookie year there. Um, yeah. That was impressive. You're out there. You think about that secondary now. So you have, you have Josiah Scott in the slot. You had um, Zach McPherson out there for Slay. And then you have Chauncey Gardner Johnson, who just got here yeah. a month ago. So you have three guys that, in training camp, weren't starters. Did you agree with before we saw the result? Did you agree with the decision to plug and play Josiah instead of moving I CJ? Did. I did because, and, and it goes back to just change one position. Two positions, yeah. And you got to have faith in your backup. Yeah. Uh, and it, to me, it came down to are you are, are you really any better giving, you know, um, Chauncey Gardner Johnson the slot and putting Kayvon out there? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm sure they thought about it. Yeah, I'm sure they thought about it, but. You're changing two positions, and you're probably getting worse at both positions. And I think I think CJ is just just kind of getting comfortable. Yeah, you, know? you don't want to yeah, lose any of that progress. Could be a setback. He's all of a sudden, all right. You made all this progress. Now you're playing the slot. I, I thought it made sense. And Josiah Scott's been around a couple of years. He's been here. Uh, he really played well in the second half. Yeah, he did. Give him credit. That's yeah. not an easy position. I mean, your, your first game action this year, basically, on defense. And, oh, yeah, you got to cover their best receiver who's yeah. had, what, 267 yards through three games? Yeah, and makes more money than Josiah Scott. Makes a lot more money than he should, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, a, lot of, a lot of good stuff on the defense. That's three straight games they've really shut a team down in different ways. Mm -hmm. and, and they're doing the things that they didn't do last year. No more year. fire Gannon champs. No, until they, you know, well – now, don't get me started. Um, I just don't know why people didn't see. He just didn't have players last year. And there's things he I, I didn't I'll like. I'll tell you what. I was nervous watching After the that. Detroit game. Yeah, I was like, uh, Second half. I know. But he's a good coach. And I think we've seen that the last three weeks. And they're doing the things they didn't do last year as far as getting takeaways, getting sacks, finishing plays, yeah. forcing turnovers, big plays. Um, they just didn't get them last year. They have almost as many takeaways this year as they had all last year. I think they had 11 last year. <laughs> they have eight this year, yeah. I believe. Um, and that's a lot of that's really just talent. Yeah. 
TJ had a heck of a game. He's just really solid. He's a really good player. Yeah. Um, you are not who you are when you're drafted, you know? Yeah. Guys it's funny. Better. I was I was joking with Nick Rallis about uh, the linebackers coach about if he came out now, he'd probably be a second round pick. Yeah. Because he's faster. Well, I mean, you know that he's a good player, but just from his measurables, uh, you know, he's just a fast. He's just he's in much better shape. He's faster. Um, he's playing really well. Uh, but I mean, the defense has given up what um, seven, six, and uh, fourteen points the last three games. Yeah, yeah. So, and that first drive. Yeah, I mean, eighty-yard drive. You're going just march oh, down. And there were some missed tackles. You th- is this a problem again? Yeah. They really, they really shut it down after that. Yeah, I thought so. They scored at the end, but let me get my drive chart out here real quick. <laughs> if uh, you can, you can cover me. Yeah. Um, let's see. So they score on their second drive. Yeah, they went three and out on the first drive. Their next – listen to this. Their next seven drives go fumble, punt, fumble, end to half, punt, interception, fumble. And the the interception, the Bradbury, that was the only drive that had, that went more than 15 yards. Yeah. Um, so that whole stretch and that – and meanwhile, the Eagles are scoring and scoring and scoring. Complimentary football, Dave. I know you like it. I love it. Uh, this is a good team, and and there's a lot of different ways they can win games, and that makes them really dangerous. Yeah, want to go through this laundry list of injuries? Yeah, it. W- I mean, it, they got, and you give them credit for winning it, but we have a lot of questions for Sirianni on Monday about the status of all these guys. Yeah, Jordan Mailata shoulder he injured it on that pick six, came back on the sideline, did not return to the game. Darius Slay forearm, didn't see what happened there. But uh, he was back on the sideline too. Did not return. It was really early. How early was that? Did you see when he got hurt? I, I I didn't see the play. It was first quarter. Yeah, it was very early. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they were before you blinked and they were down Mylotta and Slay. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how he's doing. He was joking around in the locker room, so he I don't was. think it's anything. But you know, he's the kind of guy that is always joking. Around. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll see. I, I don't think it didn't seem too serious. Uh, who else? Patrick Johnson concussion. Kyron Johnson. Uh, who had a huge hit on special teams? Yeah, that was a great um, play. He's starting to flash. Sashere had a huge hit yeah, on special as a teams. gunner. Yeah, yeah, they brought him up and yeah, he's uh, on the practice squad. But had a big hit. Yeah. Kyron Johnson was being evaluated for a cu- concussion. I did not see him return, so I'm assuming he has one. We don't know that for sure. Um, Isaac Samalu an ankle. Yeah, which is a good designation because he's coming off that list, Frank, and you worry, right. oh no, is it the foot? Right. They said ankle, so you feel good about that. He probably got rolled up on. He came back to the sideline. We it looked like he wasn't going to come back in because he didn't have a helmet. But um, hopefully, that's nothing too major. Am I missing any? Well, Devonte looked bad and he he limped off the field, but he returned. Uh, he came back and caught a ball. Yeah. Um, An early word Elliott. on Avante, by the way, that I've heard is it doesn't seem like it's like a a super long injury. They're they're hoping to maybe have him back next week. Oh, well, that would be that would be big. I mean, Scott played well, but you want Avante out there. Mm-hmm. And then Jake Elliott's the only other one. Um, yeah. but he seemed no worse for the rare for the wear. Yeah, I mean, he was still limping around pretty good. Well, well I, I think they'll get a better sense this week. Uh, that that'd be a big deal. Um, I asked Aaron Sipos how much he kicks during the week, and he said not much, but he's like, I'm ready if they ever need me to. Well, yeah, I mean, I wonder if they go. They, they'll bring in. They I would have to bring, bring someone in, in if he can't go. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, I I, I would think they'll have some guys in here kicking yeah. tomorrow. What's Caleb Sturgis up to? I bring him in. <laughs> Todd France. <laughs> yeah, so this team's been so healthy. I, I wonder when Dillard will be back, too, because... Yeah, well, he'll be eligible right. this next week. We don't know if he'll, if he's ready. We haven't heard anything. Yeah. But it'd be nice to have him back. Yeah, I mean, Dillard played well, but... I mean, um, Driscoll played well, but I, I would think you Dillard would, would be Dillard. the next guy in. Yeah. Um, yeah, so a lot of questions, a lot of injury stuff for tomorrow. And we will give you all the news as soon as we know it. Yeah. It was good to see Doug Peterson. Yeah, I got a chance to chat with him a little bit before the game. Seems happy. Seems like he's doing well. That's a well-coached team. I think they're a pretty good team. Happy for him. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I was talking to the um, Jaguars PR guy, and I thanked him for because we had our 17-minute conference call, yeah. and he said um, Doug wanted to do the Zoom call and not a not a phone call because he wanted to see the Philly guys. Oh, that's cool. And he and he told him. Let it let it go for a while. Yeah, and uh, Doug Doug wanted to talk to us. I just think that's so cool. I just yeah. think Doug 
is in such a good place mentally. And I think he needed the year off and I think it's done wonders for him. Um, I think his voice just wasn't getting heard here at the end. There's a lot going on. Mm -hmm. There was friction between him and, and, and Howie. I, I think that's clear. And, and, you know, as far as the coaching staff uh, construction, uh, but he's in a good place. The Eagles are in a good place and Doug's just a good guy and I'm happy for him. Yeah, did you see him? Uh, did you see him exchange the, yeah. the jersey exchange? So, yeah. if you guys didn't see this, Kelsey gave Doug his jersey, and Doug gave Kelsey his jacket. Yeah, that was cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I was really, I was moved by what Jalen Hurts said about Doug after the game. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, it was deep, and he, you know, he said, "I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for him." Yeah, and it, he, you know, he just talked about um, how much love for him, he has for him, how much respect he has for him, how much he meant to his career. Um, that was really cool. Jalen's such a pro, yeah. you know, such a such a class act, such a mature guy. And it was a nice ovation for Doug. Too. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was cool. So the way they did it, they you know as they're coming out in the field, the Jags uh, they announced, "Welcome back, Doug Peterson." They they get a close up of him, and then it panned right up to the uh, the Super Bowl banner. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it was good. Big ovation for him. Yeah, but there was never any question about that. Sure, <laughs> no one's booing. Doug One guy Peterson. booed. Maybe. I think it was Nick. No. <laughs> no, Nick. Nick thinks a lot of. You, know, you ever notice how how loud it gets in here when Philly's po uh, post game's over? And Nicky and uh, Ricky Bo comes up. Yeah, there. Ricky shoots out of a cannon. <laughs> it's just Ricky just comes in and it's just like he's doing a radio show at his desk over there. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, they're going to win a lot of games. I think, you know, obviously Lawrence struggled with ball security today, but mm -hmm. he, he's going to be. You can see there's something there. He's talent. Yeah, he's uh, he's 23. Um, He's improved by leaps and bounds already. Um, Eagles might be glad they got them early and on a rainy day. Yeah, you might be right. And he's someone that um, I, I'm starting to see them use his legs a little bit more. And they he should. converted that one third down. Yeah, he, he can, he's he got some wheels. He ran in college. Yeah. So, it's, it's, look, he's not Jalen Hurts, but uh, they can take advantage of that. They can run some bootlegs with them. And I think we'll start to see that with them a little bit more. One other thing we should mention, we can get into this more on Tuesday, but – um, the division all of a sudden is pretty competitive. Giants won, the Cowboys won. Yeah. The Giants uh, are all smoke and mirrors. I know, but they keep winning. Um, yeah, I, you, people think the Eagles have an easy schedule right now. Yeah, I mean that's a terrible Bears team they beat. Um, I think Daniel Jones completed eight passes in that game. <laughs> I mean the 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 Giants stink. I know they have a good record. They stink. I think so too. But there it is. Yeah. They're three and one. Um, so all of a sudden, I mean, it's yeah. just that the division is. Carson had a bad game today. Did he? You know, I didn't even look at any stats. 25 of 42, 170 yards, two interceptions. At least he didn't fumble. One touchdown. Yeah. I wonder uh, I wonder when Mr. Heineke is going to start warming up in the bullpen. I don't know. Tell you what, the Eagles might get lucky, and Dak Prescott might be the quarterback when they face the Cowboys in week six. Yeah. <laughs> Cooper Rush, uh, 15 for 27, 223, two touchdowns, no picks. He's playing well. Yeah, he is. Got anything else? No. Cool. Let's wrap this up. If you enjoy the podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, we love you too. Please click the like button and subscribe there as well. We good? Yeah. All right. We'll talk to everyone Tuesday as we get ready for Zach Ertz and the Arizona Cardinals. Ruben Frank, I'm Dave Zangaro. This has been Eagle Eye presented by Nissan.